This looks good though. This looks good. I haven't been in this set in a minute. I'm happy to revive it. I was hating it for a little bit, but it's, hey, little break gets you back into anything. Look, man, at this point, I've had a chance to sit down and edit down the R6 footage. I want to give y'all my first impressions from the camera, the things I liked about it, the things that I didn't like about it, and the things that I noticed from just using the camera. But before we do that, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Soundstripe. Now, if you guys have no idea what Soundstripe is, it's a subscription-based music licensing platform for upcoming creators, YouTubers, and filmmakers to get you radio quality music for your work. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in the past, traditionally, licensing music was very complex and very expensive, and Soundstripe has taken both of those things out of the equation. They have very affordable plans. If you're a YouTuber, you just wanna get some dope music for your channel, go over there, you can get a plan starting at $11.25 a month, which is very cheap. I don't even know if you could beat that anywhere, $11.25. Beyond that, they have premium plans, which include sound effects, business plans, which include a ton of different perks, and even just a sound effects plan if you just wanna do some sound design. Go check it out. Everything you hear in this video is from Soundstrike. The music, the sound effects, the sound design. I've been using Soundstrike for a little while now, but the sound effects really been taking my content to another level. Sound design just makes it so much more immersive. I've been having a ton of fun playing with this, man. So look, it's gonna be a link down in the description. Go to Soundstripe. You can use promo code YC Imaging to get 10% off of any plan, any one of those plans for 10% off. Go down there, get the music, get the sound effects, put it in your YouTube video, and you good. That's it, man. Now my first impressions with the camera, just ergonomically, it's not too much different from the EOS R. If you had an EOS R in the past, or you have an EOS R now, you get this, you're not gonna feel like you're using a totally different camera. You're gonna feel like you're using the same camera. Only difference is the dial on the top, the scroll wheel, and also the joystick, which I freaking love, and I'm so glad that it's back. But anyways, ergonomics aside, I just wanna talk about the things that I noticed and liked and didn't like about the camera. All right, so let's start with the good stuff, the things that I love about the camera. Joystick, just talked about that. The second is actually in-body image stabilization. It's it's kind of half and half because using in-body image stabilization on lenses that are a little bit more zoomed, that have more focal length, like 35 millimeters and up, the in-body image stabilization is low-key amazing. In this shot right here, I'm just walking handheld and I'm holding it and I'm tracking C. Ryan while he's walking down the street. And you can see that this looks good. No post stabilization added. I wonder how this would look if I added warp. I'm gonna add warp just to see how it looks. It probably looks horrible, but as is, it looks good. It reminds me of the cinema camera look. It's not too rocky. It's not too smooth, it's just right in between. You trying to get these handheld shots on the EOS R, man, it's just gonna be super shaky. So the in-body image stabilization, I really like. But on the wider side of things is where the in-body image stabilization is problematic. You guys have seen tons of videos of people talking about the wobble. This is where it happens on the wider side of things. And this is because it's a full frame sensor and I'm using a super wide lens. It's a 16 millimeters, but that's because it's powerful. Now me personally, I would rather have it than not have it. I've used the EOS R for over a year. And whenever I'm just trying to hold the camera still, or maybe I wanna do like some cool push and pull, slow motion, B-roll, BS, it's super rocky. I gotta warp it in post. Not that I won't warp this, but it's less likely that I'll have to warp it or that the warp will actually work if I wanna add it in post because of the in-body image stabilization. So on the wider side, it's kind of problematic, but close. Definitely a plus. Another thing I really like about the camera is the 10 bit. Now, it's been this huge argument for a long time about IPB and all lie. And even me in the past, I've taken information from other people about the difference between all lie and IPB. But if I'm being completely honest with you, just looking at this quality, the 4K quality, even the 1080p quality with this 10 bit, I can't tell if it's all I or IPB. What I can tell you though is coloring down this footage with this 10 bit is been a breeze. It's a lot less breaking colors, it's a lot smoother gradients, especially in skies. And when I'm just trying to push the grade, it works a lot better. So I don't know, I can't tell you the all eye IPB thing. I know a lot of people will tell you IPB is worse quality than all eye and all eye is better because it has higher bit rates. And I used to believe that, but honestly, looking at this IPB footage, I can't tell. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe if you zoom it into a brick wall at 500%, you'll see a difference, but I don't do that. I don't know. Another thing I enjoy is the camera didn't overheat on me. 
it didn't overheat once. I don't know if this 1.1 is significantly improved the overheating, but e even if my timer went down when I was filming 4K, which I filmed this entire video in 4K, if it's slow motion in here at all, it's 4K 60. If it went down to 15 minutes, I literally turned the camera off for two minutes. It goes back up to 20 minutes of 4K recording time. So I don't know. I, I'm not putting it through any vigorous things. I would use this 4K on a music video set. I probably will just to test it out, but it didn't overheat and it didn't get anywhere close to overheating. So, hey, that's a plus. Another thing that has nothing to do with this video at all, I mean, I guess it's something to do with it because I'm using it right now, is the eye tracking autofocus seems to be significantly better, like way better. I took some photos of my son uh, using the eye tracking autofocus and it is literally lightning fast. Like this is a cheat code. I remember taking photos on a DSLR back in the day and I gotta move the focus point to get on the eye every time the subject moves. All I have to worry about with this is literally framing. It is spot on every single time. It's crazy. We took some photos here on the set while we were taking this, uh, doing this video. So you'll see these, I'll put these up on the screen. But this, the autofocus with the eye tracking is literally, it's it's way better. It's so much better than the EOS R. And that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Now, a couple of things that I don't necessarily like about this camera that I've actually noticed is the screen is smaller. Now, it doesn't look that much smaller when you see a side-by-side -side comparison of like the R5 and like the EOS R and the R6. But coming from an EOS R, I notice it. I can notice that this screen is so much smaller. Another thing about the screen that I really noticed too that I didn't think I would is that the quality is a lot less than even the EOS R, I believe. When I was trying to hit focus on this manual focusing, it was times where I didn't even necessarily know if I was in focus. The only thing that was just keeping me on board was the focus peaking on the camera. So uh, the screen quality, the screen resolution, and the screen size, definitely I can notice it and I don't like it. I wish it was bigger. So just the screen, the obvious on the wider side of things is definitely problematic. But like I said, I would rather have it than to not have it. I'll do a full length review on this once I've tested it in a lot of different scenarios, music videos, on the actual set, stuff like that. But just shooting some B-roll, just shooting a cinematic sequence, I enjoy it. I think it's dope, honestly. But that's that. That's my R6 talk. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop it a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm out, guys. Peace.